What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about Destiny 2 and a little bit of info that dropped over the past day. But hey, if you guys do enjoy the video, hitting 3000 likes would be absolutely awesome. And I promise I will post nudes over on Twitter if we do. Okay, so all details today have been taken from direct quotes from Luke Smith in an interview he did with PlayStation Lifestyle. The post is titled Reshaping the World and it's quite interesting. I will link the full post in the video description if you do want to check it out, but I will cover all the besties in the video today. Okay, so let's go. The very first question he was asked was the following. I have to ask. You wore two different hoodies there on stage talking about the reveal event. I went back and I rewatched the whole thing and I noticed you wore two different hoodies with two different symbols there. Is there any significance to that? Luke Smith goes on to say, I always have a reason with stuff like that. That's always pretty deliberate. There's almost always a plan and with reason and plan, there will also be a time for the reveal. So why not? Let's go back and look at the hoodies he wore. On screen now we can see the first logo on that very hoodie. Now looking at this I have absolutely no idea of what this even is or means. But if I was to guess I'd probably say a new faction, maybe a new house. But these are wild guesses at the moment. The second logo he wore seen on screen now we see three circles. Again I have no idea of what's going on here. Again I could throw a million guesses at you guys but at the end of the day they are just guesses. But if you have an idea or an interesting guess, let me know down below in that comment section. He goes on to say, I've seen a bunch of pretty interesting analysis and I'm excited for the day where we can find out if the analysis was right or not. Foundries could be another thing which these represent though. Again, it's just a guess and they are keeping quiet on this subject. I can't wait to find out what it means to be honest. It's obviously something interesting and important to Destiny 2. Okay, so moving on and this to me is really interesting and it tells Luke Smith's perspective of what we have experienced and spoke about so far with Destiny 2. PlayStation Lifestyle asks, what things have you heard? Things that you definitely can go, alright we nailed this or okay we missed the mark. And this is something we need to change before the launch in September. Luke Smith says, I think so few people have touched the game so far and a bunch of that valuable feedback comes from playing. As we continue to expand the number of folks who are getting hands on and getting playtime with the game, we'll learn more. At E3 we had a bunch of the Drew content with the Arc Strider that we've added into the mix. The beta is going to be a similar extension with a couple of little new things that's going to come out in July. So it's an opportunity to get more people with their hands on the game and see what they think. Now I find it pretty badass to hear from Luke Smith and it kind of gives us an insight into his thought path on what us and what we have said so far, the good and the bad with Destiny 2. And I can't wait to hear uh, more opinions of you guys when you do get your hands on with the beta and see how Bungie react to it because there is going to be a lot of good and a lot of bad points coming. Now it's also interesting to mention what he says about the beta. So obviously referring to what us as players have played with Destiny 2 at the recent events, that being the Inverted Spire Strike, the little PvP we saw and played, the first mission Homecoming and a few other bits and bobs. Luke Smith says the beta is going to be a similar extension with a couple of little new things that's going to come out in July. Now it has been mentioned in the past that we will get six subclasses to use within the beta. The obvious three, Dawnblade, Gunslinger and Striker, what we used at the events. But I also believe we will get to play with the Sentinel, the Voidwalker and the Arc Strider. Anything else they add though to the beta in my opinion is a plus. Hopefully we'll get a planet to explore, that would be pretty awesome. Now if there's one thing that we didn't see from the D2 event so far and you'd like to see added to the beta, let me know what that will be down below in that comment section. Okay so moving on, PlayStation Lifestyle asks, PvP versus PvE balancing is a touchy point, but it's something that makes Destiny unique. You can go through the PvE and then you can jump into PvP or Crucible and it feels and plays the same. You have the same weapons, the same armors, so forth. How are you approaching that going into Destiny 2? Will you be separately balancing them or trying to maintain parity? Luke Smith states, We've got some stuff that we've already been able to do historically, which is adjust damage values against the monsters, etc, etc, etc. So that's what's going to continue. The main difference here, I guess, the first and foremost, we're still thinking of it the same way. One character, one arsenal taken across both lines. Does that mean we will always have bring your own guardian? Not necessarily but it means Destiny 2 is going to shift with bring your own guardian in both. I think there are opportunities to explore the other things in that space, but for us right now the tuning path is pretty different this time. The weapons are hand built in a way where before they had random talents. 
We could look at an entire archetype like hand cannons, and then we could look at data on usage rates for hand cannons and sort usage rates. And then within usage rates, check kill death ratios per hand cannon and find out what is actually effective and what's not. And then because the weapons are all hand built, we can take a given hand cannon and say, let's change this one hand cannon rather than let's pave the entire archetype. So we have opportunities in front of us that we haven't had before because of the way we've built the weapons and hopefully we'll seize those opportunities. Now this, in my opinion, is one of the main issues people seem to be having about what we know so far with Destiny 2. People are stating PvE will suffer due to the changes made to the weapon loadout to suit PvP. Although I'd like to say something that reassures you guys that it isn't the case. Looking at it from an outside perspective, it's definitely the case. Playing it, the PvE side, although didn't seem to suffer from the change too much of what I experienced, well that's without the experimentation we will get on full game release when we go up against end game activities so to speak, where in Destiny 1 weapons such as launchers and snipers are a must on many occasions. Obviously though team play here is going to play a massive part and maybe that's the direction they're going for with Destiny 2. Okay so PlayStation Lifestyle ask, we see the Crucible going to the new 4v4 mode and it's changing up the whole dynamic of fire teams. In the first you had 3 man fire teams for almost every activity and then Crucible and Rage you jump into 6 man fire teams. Now you've got 3 player activities, some 4 player activities and some 6 player activities. Do you worry about fragmenting people like those that want to hop out of a raid and play Crucible now that they've got to kick players? Are you addressing that in any way? Luke Smith states, it's a known challenge. We've looked at things like PvP and we've looked at the passion of the PvP and the Sandbox team and their passion came from a place of what can we do to make PvP as good as possible? What's the right player count? If you look at constraints that previously existed, things like fire teams being factors of the same size, and you say, what if we got rid of those things? What if we remove those constraints? Would it let us make a better PvP game? The team answers yes, and I support that too, even if it brings in some additional social friction. Now this one I'm kinda in agreement of, although uh, the PvP game mode seems a little odd, but I can only honestly see equaling out into a better PvP quality match, and maybe sometime in the future we may see the introduction of a 6v6 PvP game mode, who knows, but I can honestly see a better PvP game mode which is 4v4, but that's just me. If you have a different opinion on this, let me know down below in that comments section. They go on to talk about the audio changes and the different audio mix we will be getting, with PvP from PvE. Luke Smith states PvP is going to have its own unique audio mix which is going to make the game feel different. Audio is such a gigantic part of what matters in entertainment. Like you can play a mission and literally be sitting there and think this totally stinks and then the audio guys come through and they score it. And this mission that two days ago you were like this is not good enough. Now you're like this is amazing. It's about the impact that audio can have on the experience. And what I've experienced so far with Destiny 2, there is a massive difference between the audio, between PvE and PvP, but it's definitely a good, good thing. Next up, interestingly, they talk characters. PlayStation Lifestyle asks, Are we going to be exploring the fate of any other beloved characters? I know that the Vanguard is such a big focus, with each of them being on different planets, but are we going to be seeing more of these characters that players have come to love and hate, such as Rahul? What's the fate of Rahul? Broombot? We briefly see him in the opening mission, Amanda Holiday, she might be at the farm, Luke's with answers, you're going to have more exposure to some of them folks for sure, some will return, some will not, some of the characters that do not return will not have an explanation, we're not going to say what happened to character X because you know, we don't need to at this time and because when character X returns, maybe that character will have a story that they want to tell you about where they went. Certainly some of those characters like who I mean what's a Destiny game that doesn't have a Cryptarch? I don't know. Quite interesting to be honest. Now if you did look closely, I can confirm that Master Rohu will return with a Cryptarch of some form. I spotted this in the very first gameplay trailer we saw from Destiny 2 and I noted it in a video I posted a while back on things you may have missed, which I will link below if you want to watch it. Here at the farm we see a space for the Cryptarch. Clearly it's him in some form or another. And guys, that is it for another video. Some interesting things to talk about. Let me know what you have to say down below in that comments section. Thanks as always for stopping by. A like is much appreciated. Subscribe if you're new around here and enjoy my weird voice and want to hear more. And I will catch you guys on that next one.
we stand But you and I will carry on And never get around